eight types of drugs used in osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is caused by an imbalance in the bone remodeling. So this results in the reduced bone formation and increased bone resorption which results in the decreased bone strength in the patients. In the patients, as the bone strength is decreased, we can observe a weakening of the bones and brittle bones which are easily fragile and broken and a pain in the bones is also observed in the patients with the osteoporosis. What are the causes for osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is actually observed both in the men as well as women but particularly it is more observed in the women because of the hormonal effects as well as the loss of this calcium from the bones. Particularly it is more observed in the postmenopausal women. So in the postmenopausal women there is a lack of estrogen synthesis which results in the decreased bone strength and demineralization of the bones which leads to the osteoporosis. And osteoporosis can also be observed with the progression of the age both in the men as well as women. As the age progress there is a gradual loss of the bone mass because of the demineralization as well as the increased osteoclast activity. And sometimes few of the drugs which are used for a long term can produce the osteoporosis. Particularly this osteoporosis can be observed with the drugs like glucocorticoids like the prednisolone. Estrogen antagonists like the tamoxifen which are used for the treatment of the breast cancer. And if you have the antacids, particularly the antacids which are used for the GRD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. And even proton pump inhibitors can also produce on a long term a weakening of the bones. And heparin, heparin is one of an IV anticoagulant when it is given for a longer period it can produce a osteoporosis. So still this list can be increased. So, so many drugs may increase the risk of the osteoporosis. How the drugs are acting in the osteoporosis? So bone remodeling involves the two important processes. One is osteoclast and second is the osteoblast. Osteoclast is the bone resorption whereas osteoblast, osteoblast is the bone formation. So now the target in this uh, osteoporosis treatment of osteoporosis is that we have to inhibit this osteoclast formation and we have to increase the osteoblast. So the drugs mainly act by inhibition of the osteoclast formation or increase the osteoclast apoptosis and some of the drugs are also going to increase the osteoblast formation which promotes the bone formation and they suppress the osteoblast apoptosis so that the balance is going to be restored thereby the bone loss can be prevented. So now in this video let us see what are the different types of drugs that can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis and how they can affect either osteoclast, osteoblast or So the first one is the biphosphonates. Biphosphonates are having the structure like this and we can observe the two phosphates groups here. So these phosphate groups are acting like the inorganic phosphates and thereby they are going to interact with the bone resorption. Here two phosphate groups are attached with a carbon and this carbon is attached with the alkyl groups. These alkyl groups may have either nitrogen or they may not have the nitrogen and based on that biphosphonates are going to be classified. So we have the biphosphonates are ending with the dronate like the etidronate and alendronate. These are the biphosphonates. Now these biphosphonates can be classified based on the alkyl group whether having the nitrogen or not having the nitrogen. So some of these are classified as non-nitrogens which are the first generation biphosphonates and second is the alkyl amino biphosphonates which are the second generation biphosphonates and third one is the heterocyclic biphosphonates. So first one etidronate and Tiludronate are the two non-nitrogen containing biphosphonates which are the first generation biphosphonates. Similarly, pamidronate, alendronate and ibandronate are the biphosphonates having an alkyl amino side chain. And finally, risidronate and joledronate are the biphosphonates having the heterocyclic nitrogen. And now this is the last category is the third generation biphosphonates. And among these drugs, ibandronate is one of the drug which is given for every three months and it is a one of a long acting biphosphonate. Similarly, joledronate is a still more long acting and it is given once in a year in order to treat the osteoporosis. 
and all these biphosphonates are having one of the common side effect like the esophageal ulcers so when these drugs are given the patient has to be in the upright position in order to prevent the reflux of the drug into the esophagus and food also decreases the absorption of the biphosphonate so these drugs should be given 30 minutes before the food intake and second is the raloxifene raloxifene is a SCRM that is a selective estrogen receptor modulator SCRM is a term that is given for a drugs which are acting like both agonist as well as antagonist so raloxifene is acting like a partial agonist that means it also produces the the agonist actions of the estrogen as well as it also antagonizes few of the actions of the estrogen particularly it is going to decrease the osteoporosis by increasing the agonist activity of the estrogens so it increases the osteoblast that is a bone formation and it also decreases the osteoclast uh, the bone resorption in this way raloxifene can show a partial agonist activity by stimulating the estrogenic activity on the bones thereby it increases the the bone formation and decrease the bone resorption and raloxifene can show some of the hot flashes and uh, vaginal bleeding as few of the side effects because it is an estrogen receptor modulator third type of drug is the teriparatide so it is a parathyroid hormone analog and we can observe in this name the PARAT which is a parathyroid hormone analog so this teriparatide is a parathyroid hormone analog which is actually responsible for the osteoblast activity thereby to increase the bone formation but teriparatide is having no anti resorptive activity so it's mainly act by promoting the bone formation and fourth type is the biologicals so one of the drug is the denosumab here mab indicates is a monoclonal antibody osteoclast promoter cells are having one of the receptor to this receptor one of the ligand is going to bind that is the rank ligand once this rank ligand is bind to these receptors now these receptors are undergoing the modification so that they are converted to a multinucleated osteoclast cells now this multinucleate osteoclast cells are responsible for the bone resorption so in this way rank ligand promotes the bone resorption by binding to the osteoclast pregenitor cells now denosumab is going to antagonize the binding of this rank ligand to these receptor thereby it inhibits the conversion of the osteoclast progenitor cells to the multinucleated osteoclast cells in this way denosumab is going to inhibit the bone resorption fifth one is the calcitonin calcitonin is a peptide which is having the 32 amino acids and this is actually secreted from the thyroid follicles and this drug can also be given externally so that it is going to be control the osteoporosis the main action of this calcitonin is going to decrease the bone resorption and it also decreases the calcium as well as phosphate reabsorption in the renal tubules in this way the main action of the calcitonin is to control the calcium levels within the plasma and calcitonin is one of the drug which is given and is intranasally and it mainly relieves the pain in the osteoporosis even it is less effective than the biphosphonates this is the one of the drug which relieves the pain in the patients with the osteoporosis sixth one is the vitamin d so we have the drugs like ergo calciferol alpha calcidiol and calcitriol all these are the vitamin d preparations so this is mainly responsible for the increased calcium intestinal absorption as well as decrease the calcium excretion so that's why vitamin d is important for the bone growth and bone formation thereby it also decrease the osteoporosis and finally we have few of the other preparations which are also used in the osteoporosis so first one is the strontium strontium is having a dual effect it is going to increase the bone formation as well as it is going to decrease the bone resorption similarly another drug is the calcium gluconate actually calcium gluconate is indicated for the hyperkalemia but as calcium gluconate acts as a source of the calcium so it's also used for the conditions where there is a low blood calcium is present it can act as an calcium supplement in the treatment of the osteoporosis the main target in the osteoporosis is to increase the osteoblast formation and decrease the osteoclast activity many of the drugs are going to act on the osteoclast thereby they are going to show the anti resorptive activity and few of the drugs are going to promote the osteoblast activity thereby increase the bone formation 
the main category of drugs here are the biphosphonates which are well prescribed and among these the ibantronate and joledronate are the long acting drugs which are given uh, for three months and one year respectively and biphosphonates may show esophageal ulcer so they should be taken with the upright portion in order to prevent the esophageal reflex and the absorption of these drugs is also inhibited by food so they should be taken 30 minutes before the food and calstone is one of the drug which is going to relieve the bone pain in the osteoporosis raloxifene is the SCRM which is having the estrogenic activity on the bone thereby prevents the osteoporosis and other preparations like the vitamin D and parathyroid hormone can also suppress the osteoporosis and calcium gluconate can be given as a calcium supplement and strontium can promote the bone formation as well as decrease the bone resorption thereby it can prevent the osteoporosis so in this way we have the different types of drugs which are used in the treatment of osteoporosis